Hey there Trailblazer, my name is Cam and in this video we're doing another AMP script exercise, this time covering lookups and loops. This will be exercise part 1 of 2, that's exercise 3a and 3b. So stay with me now as we go through and we implement some AMP script challenges using lookup and loop functions. And like always for our exercises you'll find the link in the video description below to the resource page here. We will find the description as well as the part 1 and part 2 briefs. Now do make sure you start with part 1 because you do have to create some data extensions for this exercise. You'll find some CSV files here which have to be uploaded. And you'll find a PNG file here to show you what the final data extension should look like. I'll also go ahead and upload the views for each data extension so that you can see what the design for each DE looks like. So you can see all of the field names and data types. And like always, I recommend that you pause the video now and download part 1 of this brief and try it out for yourself. Make sure you build those data extensions in a common place as you use the same data extensions for part 1 and part 2. I'm going to jump ahead now and create those data extensions and stay with me if you like as I go through and solve AMP script exercise 3a. And here we are with the brief of AMP script lookups and loops, part 1 of 2, exercise 3a. So for our overview, we are going to be using a cloud page to build some lookups and for loops for some data extensions. So this process we go through step by step, of course, building each task. This is of course part one with part two being the AMP script exercise 3b. So for our required files, we have to go and make sure we have those data extensions built with this sample data provided. Of course, there's a link there to go through and get them ourselves. we have already done that, so let's go through into our brief. So what we'll be doing is we'll be building a cloud page. So for our cloud page, we we'll use our cloud pages and create a new landing page using the name of AMP E03 and our name. And let's do that now. So we'll jump into cloud pages. We can create some new content, make a landing page. And of course, our name will be AMP E03. We'll use our name as well and we'll go next. Use our blank landing page layout and go save. Okay, and that's our cloud page complete. So we'll jump back into our brief and we have a look at our setup. We won't actually be publishing any cloud pages today. We'll just be using the schedule and publish button to preview our results. We won't actually publish anything. All right, good to know. So let's jump down to task number one. We work with an online learning platform, Cloud Learners. You need to create a report which shows the names of all the current or active learners on the platform. So let's build a table structure with a 1px border around it that orders the names. Great. So objective here is to create this new content block using HTML, which has a table that should look like this. The name is the header and one, two, three, four, five names. All right, let's give that a try. So of course, to start off with, let's drag in a HTML block and start off with our code. Now, because it's a table, we'll start off with our table code. And of course, our table code will use the border equals one to give us that nice one pixel black border. Now, table is going to have a TR, which is going to have the TH for a table header of name. And underneath that, we're going to have all the names of all of the active learners in the TD section. All right, this will be the name section. So we need to write a for loop. So of course, let's do our AMP script code block and go for i is equal to one. Let's just go to five for now. And we'll do, of course, running out each of those lines before we skip back and go next i. Just get back to the start. We can test this out now by changing our name section to percent percent equals v. And we can now put the value of i. To make sure that we can count, in fact, from one to five. Let's go schedule and preview and check it out really quickly. There we go, name one through five. Good, so that's working. Go cancel to go back. Now let's instead of doing our for loop count from one to five, let's now do a lookup. So we need to add some more code in here. Now for our lookup, we have to get our data extension name. So to do that, let's go into our data extensions. And because we're looking up our five learners, let's get our cloud learners records five. 
we'll copy the name there. Go back into our cloud page. And of course, we're going to do a lookup rows function. So let's go set rows is equal to lookup rows. And lookup rows provide the data extension name, which is that one there, and the value to search on. So in our cloud learners, we do have a field called active. So we can jump in and go where active, it's a number, is equal to one. Perfect. So let's go back into our cloud page and go where, of course, the active field is equal to one. And that'll give us all the rows. Now it's gonna be our row set. We need to count how many rows will be there. Of course, we know it's five, but good practice here. We would do row count. And we count the number of rows that we return from that function, which of course that's five. And for each row, we want to return the field, the name. So we can change our V function here, and instead we can write field. Now for our field, we need to of course declare the row that we're looking into. And of course our row is gonna be in our row set. That's the row number I, returning back the field of name. And that should do it. Let's try out our code. So we'll go back to schedule and publish. And let's see if we get our names. We do, there we go. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. Fantastic, that's task number one complete. Okay, and on to task two. So before we can show them our code, we've been asked to do a count of how many courses or beams each learner has completed and a sum of how many points they've earned from the platform. Okay, so we need to add two more columns, a beams column and a points column. And to do the beams column, it's going to be a count of how many completed courses there are. And the points is a sum of how many points they've got. Okay, so note here is to check our data extensions to make sure we understand how the data is constructed. All right. So the courses only completed with the complete date or points fields have a value. Okay, good to know. So of course, our cloud learner beams is our relationship. Let's have a quick look to make sure we understand how the data is related for this exercise. Okay, so using a quick database designer tool, we're gonna to have a look at our exercise files. So our cloud learners is our five customers. Now our five customers have of course their ID field, which is unique, as well as their name, join date, email address, and their active flag, which of course should show as one for active. Now they relate on a one to many relationship on the cloud learner beams. That beam of course be a course. Now the cloud learner has a cloud learner ID and that shows us which learner we're talking about. But they also have a value here for the beam ID. And that beams ID is gonna be whatever course ID they have started. And of course a start date as well as the complete date and a points value. So if a cloud learner has started a course and it appears here in this relationship table. And the start date is that they started the course, and of course the complete date is when they completed it, and how many points they earned during that course. Now of course the beam ID then relates over to the beams ID value here, in a number, and you can see here this will be the course ID, the course name, and how many points you can earn by completing it. And of course each of these courses also has another relationship, their roles and tags. We won't use this one for this exercise, we will use this one in a later exercise. You can see the relationship here between a cloud learner, their courses, and the cloud learner to course relationship. Okay, and back on our cloud page, let's try out task number two. So we have to add some new headings for our table. We of course need beams, we also need points. So add those two in. We then need to cycle through each of the beams that each cloud learner has completed. So to do this, we have to go into our data extensions and have a look at cloud beams data extension. You can see here that not every beam has been completed. So the empty completed date and empty points means that this course has not been completed by the learner. So on cloud learner ID, we need to have a look to see if the points value has been set or not. So Let's first of all start off by copying our data extension name. Get back into our cloud page. We need to make another lookup rows function. So I copied my previous lookup rows function, just like that. We'll call this one row B. So in row B, we'll be looking up our cloud learners beams, looking up where the value of cloud learner ID is equal to 
of course, the Cloud Learner's ID, which we should get from our previous row, our first row. So we could type in a field function. So I'll say field, and where the row, of course, is from our row row, looking up the row number i, returning back the field of id, which of course was the id field from the Cloud Learner's data extension. That means that we are looking up all of the beams in the Cloud Learner Beams relationship table where the Cloud Learner ID is equal to the Cloud Learner ID. Great. With our new row set, we need to make another for loop. So let's copy my previous for loop. This time we'll call it B for beams. We'll cycle through row set B. We'll keep doing that until we finish, which of course will be next B. Now inside of this, we are of course cycling through to figure out each of the courses that have been completed. Now a completed course has a value in the points column. So we need to make an if statement. So we'll say if not empty, we have to test the field, then it's obviously not empty, which means we have got a completed course. Of course, we'll do end if. So to test our points, we need to write a field function Looking up the row in our row B row set, row number B, returning back the field of points. So that is if the points field is not empty, then it must be valid. Good O. So we'll take our field value there. And of course we need to do two things. We need to count how many beams they've completed and sum the points they've earned. So you can say set the beams be equal to, and of course we can add one to our previous themes, which also means that we can set points to be equal to the addition of our previous points plus our new points, which of course is the same value we just tested to make sure it wasn't empty. Now we can't just keep counting from nothing, we have to start from zero. So inside of our very first for loop here at the top, we need to set our beams and points values to be zero to start with. So beams start at zero and our points will start at zero. There we are. So in conclusion, we're going to be checking our cloud learners, getting all five learners for each learner, set the beams and points to be zero, then look up all the beams they've completed by checking our cloud learner data extension. We're then going to cycle through each of the rows for that loader in that data extension. And as long as the points value has something that is not empty, then we're going to add one to beams and add the points value to the points total, end if. Perfect. And of course we'll cycle through. We need to add some extra fields here too. All we have is a names field. We need to add two more. We're going to add one for the beams. So we can output the v function and beams. We'll also output the v function and points. There we are, just like that. So our name, our beams, and our points. And that's all we need. Let's give that code a go. Schedule and publish. And there we are, looking good. 10, 10, 693. And we've got 33,400, 33,200. How does it look against our results? That looks spot on. All right, task number two complete. Okay, on to task number three. So, you really love the data so far? Good to hear. The Chief Learning Officer has heard about your report and has asked for the name of the last beam completed to be added to the report. Okay, so we have to amend our table to include the last beam completed name. It should look just like that. All right, so we have to look up the beams down extension to get the last completed. All right, so back on our cloud page, let's have a look at our code. Now, of course, we were looking up the Cloud Learner Beams already, but we're returning back all the beams, completed and not completed. We've got to change our code. So I think rather than using the lookup rows, we need to use the lookup ordered rows. So lookup ordered rows, we need to add two more values here. We need to look at the ordered rows on how many rows. Now, of course, we're going to look up as many as we can get. So let's just return back 100 rows. And we're going to be doing it on what value? We do have the completed date value. So completed date, we're going to return that value on the completed date descending, D-E-S-C, because we want the most completed first and the least completed last. 
All right, so we should get back all 100. Actually, we can put zero because any number that's less than one will return back as many rows as possible. Complete a date descending on our cloud learner. All right. What this now means we should be able to count those rows and the first row should be the most recently completed. So we can now write another function in here. So we can instead say, if the row number that we're on is equal to one, so it's the first row, then this is gonna be the very first course. Great, so we can set latest name to be equal to the name of this course. So how do we get the name of this course? Well, we've got the ID. So we're gonna have the ID from this Cloud Learner Beams. We're gonna have to look it up against the actual Beams data extension. You can see here we've got the beams data extension. So let's do a lookup function on beams. So it's going to be lookup. We'll look up the beams data extension. We're going to return back the name of the data extension. Where what? Let's have a look at our data extension. We're returning back our name where the ID, where the ID is equal to, of course, the ID. Now what's the ID? It's gonna be coming from this set. So it's gonna be a field within our row B set. I've already got a field function here for points. It's gonna be exactly the same uh, format. We're gonna want the beam ID. Now what's it actually called? So should we get this right and go into our Cloud Learner Beams? I think it was the beams ID as a number. Yes, it is the beams ID. So go in and make it the beams ID. There we are. So we're going to be looking up the name of the Beams ID where it's the first row in our ordered rows. And then that'll be our latest name. Fantastic. Now, of course, we do want to try and reset the latest name just in case. So we'll also go set latest name is empty at the very start for every single learner that we go through. And of course, we need to add some more to our table. So we want the latest Beams completed. There we are, latest Beam completed. So let's copy that text there. Back into our cloud page, latest beam completed. And another cell at the bottom here with, of course, the latest name, just like that. All right, let's give that a go. Schedule and publish. Looking good. Designing for service, build and cloud. Designing for service, build and cloud. Fantastic. That is part number three complete. Okay, and task number four. Everyone liked that? Great. The Chief Loyalty Officer is getting in on the action. I would like you to add a column for the unfinished beams to show a list of all the courses that each learner has started but not completed. All right, so another column we're adding, and it's gonna be blank if they've not got any incomplete courses, and it will show on a new line each course they are yet to complete if they have incomplete courses. All right, so we can see here there are a couple of blanks, but Bravo, Delta, and Echo both have two courses each. All right. So again, the complete courses will have a value in the completed or points. Incomplete will not have those values. All right, let's take a look then. So back in our code, we need to add one more table header, of course, one more TH. And this one is going to be our unfinished beams. So let's copy that text. And we're going to do unfinished beams, just like that. All right, I have one more cell there as well. So for unfinished beams, it's all the ones that don't have a point value. So we've already got an if statement here, which is saying if not empty points, then we'll add these points up. So we can just add an else statement. So you can say else, and this must mean the points value is empty. Okay, so the points value is empty, then we can start to make our list of all the incomplete courses. All right, let's just start with, let's make a value that starts as empty. So we'll call this unfinished. So we'll set unfinished to be equal to nothing to start with. Then you just start building our list out. So else unfinished, well, let's add to unfinished. Else unfinished will be what? Be equal to concat, you know, a bit of a list of all the uncompleted Courses, so concat, we're gonna add unfinished, we're adding what to it. So then we'll add 
the name of the incomplete course. Now to get the name of the incomplete course, we of course we use our field value to look up not the points, but we'll look up the name. So we can look up the name, of course we're in row B, uh, looking at row number B, get our name, and of course we then want to also add a line break at the end. So add a break at the end, which means that we should cycle through and every time the else statement fires, so that is if the points balance is empty, we're going to take unfinished, which started as being empty. We're going to, from empty, add the name and then a line break. It'll keep cycling through until it gets to the next incomplete one, but then adds the next name and the next line break to that previous list to create our list of unfinished. Great. We can then go and add unfinished into our final row set here. And that should be our unfinished column as unfinished. Good, let's give that a try. Schedule and publish. Oops, made a mistake there. So I'll go back and have a quick look. I think we might have had not quite enough brackets. We've got concat, one, two, three, one, two, three, we do. Set unfinished is concat, unfinished to our field, row, row set B with name. Yep, that's correct. Ah, no, it's not the name. We're trying to get name from the wrong row set. We have to do a lookup function. Ah, it's this one here. We want to look up. That's the function we need. So we need to use that function there, looking up the name using our beams ID. All right, let's try that. Hey, there we go. So cloud admin beginner and cloud process automation with a blank above and below. Cloud admin beginner automation. Perfect. All right, that task is complete. Okay, and now for our final task, task number five, we're in the end game now. The CEO themselves has heard of your work and is curious and has a question for you. Given learners earn points every time that they complete a beam, I would like to know the accuracy each learner has achieved on their completed courses so far, represented as a whole percentage. Let's scroll down the following. So the learners points that they've earned over the sum of the possible completed beam points. Okay. The goal here is to produce an accuracy. So there it is there. To show how accurate each learner has been through their courses. Okay. So of course you maybe you don't get 100% of the points if you don't do so well in the course. And so this learner here has 80% is to have 73. Okay. So we can use the accuracy column. All right. Let's go into our code then. We'll take accuracy with us. Go into our code. Let's make a new table header called accuracy. All right, accuracy, there we are. The accuracy will be a percent. We have to count up all of the points and see what percent they've got. Okay, so we need to have another value. We've been summing up the points they've earned. We now need to get how many points they could have earned. So let's take points. Let's make a new one called max points. That's the maximum they could have earned. And go into here and rather than adding up the points that they did earn, we need to add something else. Something that they could have earned. To do this, we have, of course have to look up another value again. So we can use our lookup value. But like before, we're not going to look up name. This time we're going to look up another value, which will be their points. So I'll take points and we'll go looking up the beams, looking up the total points they could have earned for each beam. One each beam ID, of course, and adding that to their max points. That creates the maximum total number of points they could have earned. Okay. So now we have max points, which of course starts at zero. We build it up with adding the whole way. Let's output our max points value before we do our percentage. Just make sure it works. So we've got our max points here. Only of course we're not empty. Of course we're only counting the ones that have completed. We're adding where the beams points value on the ID for of course the cloud letter beams. Max points adding, all right, done and schedule. So how many points did each learner actually accrue? So you can see here that they've got this many points, but they could have earned that many. That looks about right. We did see it was in the 17, 80 percentiles. That looks about right. All right, so we've got the right number. We now just need to create it as a percentage function. So to do a percent function, we're going to have to do a couple of things. We're going to have to do a number format. We also want to do a divide. So before we output our values, 
we want to do some math. So we can do our math just here, outside of the um, for loop before we output the values. So let's go set percent. Set percent will be equal to, first we have to do is divide. Oops, divide. We're going to divide what by what. It'll be the points you've earned divided by the max points. When we have that value, we have to do one more thing, which is a number format. So for the number format, we want to do a format number function. So go format number. We're going to format that number, dividing points by max points, and into what format? Well, in the format number function, we do have the percentile, which is a P. So we can use P, but we do also want to make sure there's no decimal points. So if we go and check our brief, it says the whole percentage with no decimals. So if we go back into our code, we use the P0, which means zero decimal places as our at percent. With that percent, of course, we can use at percent in our output. We can check out our code by going schedule and publish. Hey, and there we are. 74, 73, 73. 74, 73, 73, perfect. That is task number five, fifth and final, complete. And so now we've completed the exercise for Script lookups and loops 3A. You of course can check out the code I used in all of these answers in the answer section for this brief. And as you've learned how to do the lookups and loops for part one, try out part two, where we'll be using lookups and loops in emails to create dynamic content for each of these learners. There's a link in the description below to take you to part two for this task. If you've liked part one though, before you leave, make sure you click like on this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far today. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.